I'm going to say hi everybody. My name is Carrie Dorsky. I am the operations coordinator here at the NWTC Artisan and Business Center. Um, sometimes I do these artist journey series from my office like tonight. Sometimes I'm on location. Sometimes I'm at home. So um, on location. Yes. I like that. I started that this year and it was very fun. I kind of like picked up my laptop and my microphone and took it on the road a little bit, but um, Artist Journey is a series we do on the third Tuesday of every month from September to May, and it's business focused. So I really like to interview uh, three artists, three organizations, and cover three business topics. So Anne is here with us in April um, from Create Wisconsin. Next month is our panel of five residents who have been with us for the year, and they're going to talk about their experience as our residents here and what it means to kind of be an entrepreneur in Northeast Wisconsin. So that'll be a fun one. Join us for that. And with that said, I'm going to let Ann introduce herself and then we'll go from there. But anybody joining us tonight, please drop your questions in the chat, unmute your mics and ask your questions. I love to keep these really casual and easygoing. So we're having a conversation. Join us. Cool. Very cool. OK, thank you, Carrie. Um, I'm Ann Katz. Excuse me, I'm director of Create Wisconsin. We're the state's community cultural development organization. Um, we are all about the arts for everyone, everywhere in the state. We are all about, uh, we are a service organization and we provide advocacy and development as part of our service for pretty much everything and everyone connected to the arts in Wisconsin. So that means that we work with creative people. And I have to say, this is my own personal thing. I don't really like the, the term creatives, not because I don't think that creative people are special, but we're all we're all creative, right? And that's one of our big things is that we're, everyone is creative. And so I'm always, we're always trying to break down the, the barriers between um, the arts and, you know, all the normal things that are over there. So, um, but we work with creative workers, creative organizations, local government, economic development, education, pretty much everyone who cares about Wisconsin's future. Um, and we, um, we, we do a variety of service kind of things. That means that we lobby the legislature and I can, I'll, I can talk about that. Um, we, um, we help people figure out how to take that creative spark that they have and turn it into something that they can make money or they can with or they can do something with their, um, you know, do something for their community with or whatever. We do a lot of I do a lot of speaking and writing about the value of the arts and the impact of the arts. I'm sort of always going on and on and on about all of those things. Um, and in general, we look for ways to bring people together to educate people to uh, keep making the case that um, that the arts are not something that's separate from everything else in life, that that the arts are part of um, everything that's fundamental about Wisconsin and should be celebrated and invested in. So um, I, I want to go to the way back machine, Carrie, um, to the mid part of the last century. And I don't have you ever talked about Robert Gard in any of these sessions? I don't, I don't think we have, but I think I might have heard you speak about him. <laughs> OK, well, so um, Wisconsin has a long and proud history of the arts springing from the grassroots. And by that, I mean, we've always been a place where people are involved in the arts, wherever, no matter where they live or what they're interested in. And that has to do with our progressive traditions, the Wisconsin idea. Do I need to tell people what the Wisconsin idea is? I'll yeah. just briefly do yeah. that um, because I'm a big fan of the Wisconsin idea. So see, there's so many tangents here. Um, in the mid part yeah. of the last oh. century, um, the chancellor of the university in Madison, which at the time was the only campus um, in the university, there, there wasn't a university system, there was just Madison, and the governor of the state, this was about, this was the early 1900s, put their heads together and they came up with this thing that they called the Wisconsin idea, which was that the borders of the university are the borders of the state. So the resources of the great University of Wisconsin would be available for everyone. Um, and it, it, in the beginning, it sort of usually, it, it usually meant 
agriculture, right? Because the University of Wisconsin was founded as a land grant university. It was founded to be an agricultural school. So, so Wisconsin is known for its agriculture, but pretty quickly and comprehensively, the Wisconsin idea really embraced the arts in fundamental ways. And so um, I just love that. You know, I just love that about Wisconsin that we've always, even though there's lots of politics out there, we've always been this sort of egalitarian state where everybody, we, we have this mindset that people get to participate because of the Wisconsin idea. Anyway, in the mid part of the last century, there was, a, there was something at, at Madison called the Office of Community Arts Development, which was based in the ag school, not the art school. I really love that part. Um, and a professor named Robert Gard uh, was hired to be the director of this office and sort of make the arts available to everyone in the state. So he went around the state um, with a big tape recorder, taping people's stories and helping them turn them into plays and helping people start community choirs and um, putting together something that was called the School of the Arts, which was in Rhinelander for many years. And a lot of the infrastructure that we still have in Wisconsin was based on what Gard did to really make the arts accessible to the people of Wisconsin, no matter, again, no matter where they lived or um, you know what they what they were interested in. So I've always really loved that that about Wisconsin, and that's what our organization was founded on, and that's what we try to do. We really try to make we try to make the case that the arts should be available to everyone, no matter what kind of what they're interested in. We make the case that the arts are fundamental, not only fundamental to the human condition because we're all creative, but also fundamental to our economy, our education, quality of life, all of those things. Um, and we really try to live that statewide mission in um, helping people achieve whatever it is they want to achieve for themselves and their communities. So um, we were founded in the early, um, let's see, we were founded when the Wisconsin Arts Board brought um, people working in the arts together in the early 90s. Uh, to kind of not to make a network, but to revitalize this network. I was hired as the first <laughs> and so far only director that this organization has had. Um, it's amazing. I could not have predicted that this was what I was going to spend my most of my working life doing. And it's been the greatest thing I could have done. I mean, it's been very fulfilling. I am not originally from Wisconsin. I came, I grew up in the suburbs of New York City. I not only did not know anything about Wisconsin, I really didn't care about Wisconsin. It wasn't a, it just was not a place that anybody in my family ever really thought about. And it was quite confusing to my parents when I said I was going to move to Wisconsin. Um, and then I ended up marrying a guy from South Dakota. So, you know, they were all very confused, but it's all worked out well. Um, and I've had the privilege of, um, tra of being out uh, traveling around the state pretty much constantly um, for the last 28 years. In fact, we had this little break, you know, in 2020 and 2021 where we didn't get to travel, but now I'm sort of back out there traveling everywhere in the state. If you want to know where the best pie and ice cream is, I can tell you. Uh, I have pretty much, you know, local food, local art, it's all connected. Um, I'm very fond of Wisconsin. It's even before I had this job, we always recreated um, and biked and canoed around the state. Um, so I, um, I've come to know Wisconsin really well and I'm re and I, I live in Madison, but I, um, you know, I'm always interacting with and sort of, and just my whole, the, my, my work is all about the whole state. And again, we really try to live that statewide mission. So, um, you know, the point of your series, Carrie, is to kind of talk about the artist's way and what, you know, how people can, and I, I don't mean to be snarky when I do this, but, you know, make their living in the arts. Let me say, I have no idea what that means. And I mean, I'm being, I'm being snarky. Um, I have really come to learn that everyone has a different idea about what that means. And 
actually people have a different have X idea about what that means, but then it turns out that when they try to do whatever it is, it turns out to be Y. Like I started as a theater major. And if anyone, you know, I was going to be a big Broadway star. That was my career goal. So I just sort of morphed into this community activist who works in the arts. And it turns out to be that's what I was supposed to be doing. And I get to sing every once in a while. So um, I am in awe of the creativity, as I've said, that's out there and what people come up with. I don't know anything about art. I will, you know, I hate it when people say that, but I'll say it. I don't ever like to get into, oh, sorry, my cat's crying. I don't ever like to get into conversations about what is art or who's an artist, because again, most of the people I deal with are creative and they're artists, but they don't necessarily think of themselves that way. Some people do, and some people are lucky slash hard, I mean, everybody's hardworking, you know, sometimes people, no, I won't say sometimes, as people go along, they figure out how, what it means to them to make their living in the arts, right, or in a creative way. Some people only want to sell their work, and if they can figure out how to do that, great. More people sell their work, uh, teach, uh, they work as security guards in art museums. They drive cabs. Um, you know, they do a million different things to make money. And hopefully all of those things are in a creative kind of way so that they can feel like they're letting that creativity shine. And uh, the other thing I'll say is that everybody, you know, starts out as a young person doing X and then as you get older and figure more things out, then you then you get to Y, right? Um, there isn't a poet in history that's made their living as a poet. I can't think of, I mean, I'm sh maybe there is, but even those people were, you know, funded by the popes or whatever. Um, there isn't an, uh, well, and that there isn't an artist in history who hasn't been subsidized in some way, right? If you've gotten a grant from somewhere, um, Michelangelo was supported by the Pope. I mean, you know, things like that. And so what I see in abundance is that people are always trying to figure out what am I passionate about? What am I skilled in? And how can I make money to support, um, to, su to support myself, my family, you know, my life? Um, we have this is this is more perform well it's performing and visual um we've been working over the pandemic we worked with some organizations some small arts organizations to help them sort of you know figure out try to analyze and figure out what was happening to their work and how they were dealing with it and it's been really interesting because uh one of the or and right now we're doing kind of a like a report on it one of the people um, said, well, it turns out there's been a silver lining in this, uh, in this whole pandemic thing because I didn't know that we could do whatever it is. And it turned out that that was really good for our, um, you know, for our work overall because it brought more people in. It got more people to see what we were doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think a lot of people think, you know, I think a lot of people have come to that conclusion um, that even though the forced isolation that we have all dealt with has been pain was what has been painful, there still has have been moments of joy or revelation or whatever because you realized you could do blah blah blah, whatever it was. Um, imagine having the pandemic without the internet. I mean, we, we'd be, it, yeah, we'd be in 1918. Um, so, so that's one thing about sort of making your way as an artist that I've seen, um, especially in the last through three years, just amazing transformation um, in terms of what people 
have done to make their living as, in a creative way. I won't even say, I won't say make their living as artists because again, it's making your living in a creative way. I have a friend who is a juggler <clears throat> uh, and he has made, well, I will say he started out as a professor of education and then he decided that he really wanted to be a juggler. Um, uh, so he has, and he is married to um, someone who worked for the state. So he had health insurance, which meant that he didn't have to worry about that. I mean, that's my little snarky joke. How do you make your living as an artist? Well, you marry someone with health insurance or how do you make your living as a nonprofit arts administrator? Uh, you know, I, my husband was a teacher. Um, so I didn't have to worry about health insurance. I mean, so I had health insurance, but that's unfortunately one of the things about our system. Um, my friend is a juggler. I mean, he performs as a juggler. He also has written books. He's created websites. Um, uh, he thinks of all the different kinds of topics he could do a presentation on. And if someone, and he writes them down, you know, they're all on his website. And if he, someone says, hey, can you do a presentation on that? He says, sure. And then he makes the present, he makes up the presentation. He doesn't necessarily have it written, but he does it. He helps corporate leaders um, learn how to be, how to present, you know, how to speak because that's what he, you know, that's what he does. So he does a million different things around the idea that he has around his set of skills. Um, he didn't start out doing all those other things. He started out as a professor, then he became a juggler. And then along the way, he realized, oh, I like to write. I could write books about, I like to write about historical figures. So he's written a lot of books for the State Historical Society. Oh, I can, I'm, I'm gonna learn how to do the website. Okay, I can do websites for somebody. So he's always learning. And I find that, you know, the people that I, the people that are most impressive, although, you know, there are so many impressive people out there are the people who sort of never stop trying to figure out what is it, what are my creative skills? And I think that's probably what the artist way is all about, right? That you just keep trying to figure out what is it that I'm passionate about? What is it that I can do? What can I learn? And totally presenting you know, everybody's story is so different. And when an artist decides they want to do this, that whole journey is different, right? They, might see, oh, that's how one artist does it, and that's how another artist does it, and then they take a little piece or a little advice from every person they interact with. And, and then they make their own way. And actually, that's a really important thing to say, because not only with individual artists, but I get, um, I get a lot of, like, organizational people or community people who say, well, we want to be like Eau Claire, or we want to be like... Uh, you know, we want to do what Appleton is doing or what Madison is doing. And, you know, my answer is, well, you need to do what you're going to do, right? You need to do what your community is going to do. And um, and that may be a harder, that may be harder than copying what another community does, but that is kind of what you need to do. So Carrie, you're freezing on me. Can you still hear me and see me? Yeah, you look good on my end. Okay. Well, your screen is frozen, but I can hear you. So that's good. I just want to make sure you were still there. I hope um, I'm not making a crazy face at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think that's one of the fundamental things that I've really learned in this job is that, is that we all wish it was easier. Oh, Samantha said it's frozen for her too. Yeah. Everything. Should I keep talking? I'll just yeah. keep talking. Yeah, um, we all wish that the journey was easier. Yeah, I think I would. I think that's a thing to say. Um, but um, but you know, fortunately or unfortunately, um, we all have to kind of come to our journey ourselves, and um, that's a process. What What is really amazing is that um, most people you know, people stick with it. People stick with their, that process and they stick with the journey and, you know, hopefully eventually they find a way to make that creative living. Um, okay, so I could, you know, I could go on and on about that. I've got a couple um, questions. Go ahead, wait, I'm sorry, say it again. I've got a couple questions I was okay, thinking good. before you and I sat down. 
Can you fill us in on Create Wisconsin Day in the last week you had? Sure. So now I can talk about that legislative, you know, the sort of exactly. Programming. Yeah. So um, as I said, we're advocacy, service, and development. And when I say advocacy, many people think advocacy is only lobbying, right? Oh, we have to go into the Capitol and make, you know, get dressed up and talk to the legislators and and you know. Um, that's ad, that's what advocacy is. Well, that's part of advocacy. You know, create Wisconsin Day, which used to be, ah, oh, now you're not frozen. Woohoo! She's yeah. unfrozen. Um, oh, there she went again. Oh, create no. Wisconsin Day, which used to be called Arts Day, um, is really all about everybody gathering together and, every, and, and making a big noise for the arts, right? You know, everybody um, uh, coming together in Madison, learning from each other and... Um, and making that impression. Um, but ad, but before I get to talking about Create Wisconsin Day, advocacy really is that ongoing process of speaking up for your cause. And I always say that, um, you know, we all kind of bitch about, well, that person got money and I didn't get any money and how come I didn't get any money and how come that thing got money and why doesn't anybody fund the arts? Well, that's a question I ask myself too, but um, you know, we are all called upon to speak up for our causes and for the things we're, we're passionate about. And if we don't do that, then somebody else will speak up for their cause and then they will get the money and we will wonder why we didn't get, net, get the money. And so, you know, Margaret Mead said, never doubt the ability of one person to change the world. Um, <clears throat> pretty much the world has been changed because one person was passionate about something and then they convinced, and then they found another person who was passionate about the same thing. And then four people turned out to be passionate about something and then that turned into, you know, a movement. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of people speaking up for their causes because I've seen that, we, we have all seen that over the course of history, that's what has changed the world. You know, Martin Luther King did not start out to be um, the leader of the civil rights movement, but he was brought into a set of circumstances and it turned out that he was the right person at the right time. Um, but he did not sort of set out to be that person. He, he became that person because it was the thing that he was called to do. And the moment was his. Um, we, we really preach the idea that true effective advocacy is a daily activity. So um, M Wisconsin is not a very big state. I mean, even Madison and Milwaukee are, are pretty much small towns in their own ways. And we all, I mean, maybe I think this because I run a statewide organization, but and I'm involved in local politics and community stuff in Madison, but we all kind of know each other, right? I mean, we're all kind of connected and we're, we're friendly people and, we, we usually, we know who our elected officials are, or we should, and we, um, you know, we, we meet them in the supermarket. We, um, you know, we talk to them at their offices, whatever. And so that is advocacy. That's the daily activity of advocacy. And I'm always advising people, if you have an art show, invite your legislator to your art show. They love to take pictures and especially in front of artwork. Oh my gosh, that's like, a that's a blessing. Um, <clears throat> if you have a newsletter or a website, invite your legislator or your mayor or some other official to write an article or, you know, again, to, to judge a competition. Um, find ways to work your decision makers, whether they're the legislators or the mayor or whoever, find ways to make those decision makers part of your organization, your work, your studio, your community. Every politician um, has the obligation to uh, connect to their constituents. And so, um, find way find small ways to do that and that is what advocacy is so <clears throat> to get back to create wisconsin day as i said every once in a while we um have a day or have a day in madison where we march up to the capitol and make a big noise for the arts um 
this was the first time we got to do it in person in three years. Last time was 2019. So that was really nice. Um, we uh, had people come from Kenosha, from Superior, from um, Mineral Point and Green Bay and kind of everywhere in between. So that was really nice. And the really the greatest part of it um, was that we had a lot of young people. Um, we had 30 students from UW Stevens Point's Arts Management Program. We had about 10 students from Milwaukee Reps Teen Council. And we had a bunch of other students from Superior and other places. And that was so great because they were so enthusiastic. They were so interesting. They were so, this is what I say about young people now, they were so clueful. I was really clueless when I was in my teens and 20s. I just had really no idea what I could do. And I find that the you know young people these days are really, really good at kind of being forthright and figuring out what they want to do. Um, so many young people that I see are really, they're doing interesting things, they're, they're fighting for their causes. So that is really inspiring. Um, you know, we're in state budget season right now. And so um, we're trying to get a few bills through the legislature, through the process. The governor has proposed some funding for the Wisconsin Arts Board, which is great. We have to convince the legislature that it's not the governor's idea, but it's their idea because, you know, we've got a Democratic governor and a Republican legislature. Um, we're also working on some funding for rural areas. So people were speaking up for that. So so Create Wisconsin Day was was um, was really fun and um, a lot of work, but but it was great to get people together. One of the things that I'll say about the events that we do, and I'm sure you all find this too, is <clears throat> I don't even know what comes out of the events that we do. And by that, I mean um, on Create Wisconsin Day, one of my board members who's from Superior was talking to a colleague, one of my colleagues from Madison. And I said, how do you know each other? And it turned out that at the previous Create Wisconsin Day, which was in 2019, or Arts Day, they had met each other there and then they did some programs together. And I didn't even know about that. You know, I had no idea that Superior and Madison connected um, uh, at our event. So that was really fulfilling. It was like, oh my gosh, that's a that's great to know. You know, I'm really great, glad to hear that. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else can I tell you? I up oh, there's Carrie, but she yeah. keeps freezing. Are you still there? Yeah, you haven't yeah. frozen for me at all, so. Okay, that's good. I feel um, like I'm right here with you, so. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. As On long as I note, can hear you. I was looking at your list of board members and realized that I went to high school in central Wisconsin with one of your board members who's in Rhinelander, which I, you know, kind of to the point of your story, Wisconsin is kind of a small town. <laughs> yeah, oh, you went to high school with Zach? With Zach, yeah, we went to high oh, school. Oh, he's such a great guy. Yeah, he really is. And like, yeah, I mean, when he was mayor in Wisconsin, in Rap, are you, did you grow up in Rapids? Yep, that's where I'm from. So I'm going there next week for a, right. a meeting. Um, uh, right, so Zach Brewink, um, yeah. who Carrie is talking about, was mayor of, of Wisconsin Rapids um, at a very young age. Yeah. <laughs> and then unfortunately he lost his election and he moved to Rhinelander to um, be the city administrator there. And now he's actually working for the deputy as deputy director of the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. So um, we're really thrilled. So he's an example of someone who you might not think of as an arts person, but he's totally all about creativity, creative economy, you know. Um, right. I mean, community, you know, and we really, you know, every every local official that I that I come into contact with, and I've met a lot of them, is looking for the answer, right? Is looking for the answer about how do we get young people to move to our community or stay in our community or come back to our community? How do we get businesses to be able to survive on Main Street? How do we get jobs at an event? How do we educate our kids? All of those, you know, how do we find things for people to do? And Wisconsin has a lot of challenges in that regard. I mean, in a lot of ways, we're an aging, emptying out state in our rural areas. People are moving to the cities and don't necessarily want to stay in their small towns. 
But <clears throat> there is also this whole entrepreneurial culture where people are either moving back to their hometowns or moving to a small town and they're opening art galleries and art centers and um, um, craft breweries and wineries and hotels. And so, um, you know, in a small place, there's a lot, or in any place in Wisconsin, there's a lot of opportunity um, because we are, you know, we are a state where we are not afraid to ask for things and we, you know, we try to work with our neighbors. And so, um, you know, that whole creative spirit is really, again, what we're trying to nurture as, you know, in our service and our advocacy and all of that. Um, um, okay, Carrie, back, what else can I tell you? Back in 2019, you mentioned Arts Wisconsin. Can you tell us about the name change? Sure. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so as I said, this is, I think I said this, this is our fourth name. Maybe I didn't say it. So we started as the Wisconsin Assembly of Local Arts Agencies in 1992. And we were basically a network of local of organizations that did a variety of arts things in their communities, arts councils, arts centers. And that's still one of our core constituencies. Over the years, we've morphed into, um, what we've tried to stay ahead of what's happening out there in the world and um, uh, tr not trying to react to things, but to, to keep things moving forward. So the world keeps changing and, and the whole idea of the creative economy, which came up, which kind of came into, into being around the turn of the lat of turn of the century, um, just as we were reaching the millennium, um, we started realizing that we not only needed to work with the art sector, but we needed to work with the mayors and the politicians and, um, sorry, my battery is running low. I have to make sure my computer is plugged in, um, you know, that we needed to work with, um, all the people who cared about Wisconsin's future. So we became the Wisconsin Assembly for Local Arts. Oh, that's much better. Um, and we um, we started working with those mayors and city council people and uh, people who might not have been traditional artists, but were still very creative. And then we went through a whole planning process in 2004 and we became Arts Wisconsin because that was just simple and easy and short and sweet. And that worked very well for a long time. But as I said, I think I said at the beginning, um, we really are pushing the idea that the arts are not something separate over here that only a few people get to do. But and then the rest of the you know real world is over here. But that the arts are something that everybody um, should be able to participate in, and that creative spirit should be nurtured, um, and that the arts as a um, economic and civic force is critical to Wisconsin's future. So I talk about creativity way more than I talk about the arts, even though the arts are at the heart of it. Um, sometimes I say, I don't want to talk about the arts anymore, but I don't really mean that. Um, what, what, what I mean is that it's really about that. It's really about creativity. And we really want, I've had way too many legislators or people in power say, well, we have higher priorities than the arts. You know, we don't want to support the arts because we have more, we, we need to support jobs and businesses. Yes, that's what we're talking about. And I don't want you saying to me, well, my legislator doesn't really care about the arts. Your legislator is probably in the arts. He probably is in the church choir or his kid takes ballet or whatever. Um, but he does want to talk about jobs and businesses. So let's talk <clears throat> about the 87,000 full-time jobs in the state that are based in the arts. Let's talk about the $10.8 billion economic impact that we know is the case from the, the research that the Re Department of Commerce has done. Let's talk about that. And oh, by the way, the arts make us human and um, we wanna make sure that everybody gets to participate. So um, Create Wisconsin is, a, um, is an idea that we had been working on before the pandemic. Um, the pandemic sort of hastened our need to make that change. And it's been great. I mean, it's, it's, 
it's a door that's open to us um, that wasn't open before where we can talk about, again, the creative economy, creative placemaking, placekeeping, and the fact that um, everyone is um, it, it, everyone is in the arts in a million, you know, in whatever way makes sense to them. So it's been a good change. Yeah, I thought about it too. And I thought, you know, when I started hearing the, the rumble of the name change, I thought this makes sense. Yeah, this is ahead of the curve. This is being proactive. Uh, well, you know, it's it's interesting because there are there are there are those changes happening. You know, there's uh, we there's a network of organizations like Create Wisconsin around this, the country, and now there's Create Creative Ohio, Mass Massachusetts Creative, um, the Colorado Creative Industries Council. So it's a also, it's a change that's happening out there in the world for me when also like the um, like Chamber of Commerce or like right. you know like well, de destination Sturgeon Bay now you know. Yes. That, that felt like the same kind of change in my mind. Right, you know, we, uh, 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 as a student of history, I love history, we are in this incredibly interesting moment in time that books and books and books will be written about, that we are just trying to like live through it. You know, we're trying to get through the day. Um, but you know how we said to our grandparents, well, what was it like living through the depression? Well, our grandchildren will say, what was it like living through the pandemic era? Because um, even though everything looks the same, I think we're living through these profound changes that we won't even realize um, for, you know, until we look back and say, oh, yeah, that's that's what happened. Got it. Um, the pandemic, I mean, it was changing even before the pandemic, but the pandemic just kind of like threw everything up in the air and now the dust is settling and we just, in some ways, we don't even know how it's going to turn out. Oh, and this series used to be in person. And we could fit maybe 50 people in a classroom, right? Right. One right. time thing. And now it'll probably forever be virtual because artists, creatives, I have crazy schedules, right? They're working three or four jobs. They're doing a bunch of things or they have kids and families. And so they're watching these recordings and accessing these resources when it works best for them. Maybe it's right. like them when they're right. working at their desk, you know? So things have permanently changed for us. Right. Right. I mean, it, uh, it's it's open. Now, there's nothing that replaces actual human contact, right? Right. But the whole idea that you can now get this out around the world, I exactly. mean, that is absolutely profound. Yep. Yeah. It's, so, it's to see, like, when I interview an artist and I get it posted on social media, and then I kind of watch the, the views hit. And when they hit, like, 3,000 people, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I could have never. And then you think... I was literally meeting with an arts organization, the Urban Cultural Arts Center, just down the street from us. And a gentleman walked in the door and he said, oh my gosh, you're the woman who does those videos. <laughs> I was, oh, that's what I'm known for, but that's great because, you know, maybe those people would have never come through the door, but when they start circulating on social media, that means we're reaching people we could have never reached before. Right, right, right. So, so yeah, it's, um, I mean, it certainly makes it, for us, it makes it a lot easier as as much as I love traveling around the state and I am doing that. And there's many, there are many times when I really have, you know, I really have to do that because you really have to show up. Just the contacts that, that, that I can keep by doing it online is, it's profound. Okay. So, well, yeah. I mean, this has made me feel very nostalgic because I still remember when Ellen Rosewall brought you into one of my classes at UW-Green Bay, which would have been, you know, a, a long time ago now. A this. long time ago. <laughs> but that's what I'm thinking about. It's like, you know, to meet you in person. And now I'm just like, hey, Anne, can we do a, a virtual chat from home and we can just hop on this call and have a conversation? Whereas, you know, before it would have been scheduling and when are you in the area and can we make a special trip? And so it has made things much easier. Which right, is right. Right. So, so yeah, it's um, the more access, the better. And just think about, you know, an artist selling their work and making their living and being able to sell a, around the world. Absolutely. Um, if they can, if they can figure out how that works, yep. it's it's amazing. For sure. So, so the residency program that we run, that's kind of the thing, is that we take five people each year and kind of mentor them and put professionals in front of them to say you know, 
Do you want to be an artist that sells at markets? Do you want to be an artist that sells online? Do you want to be in galleries? Do you want to be in museums? Like define that path and help pursue it. But like we talked about very early in the beginning of this conversation, that journey is very different for every single artist. Right. Every single creative person is on a different path. And how can we all support them? Yeah. So so yeah, it's um it's yeah, it's sometimes I you think Oh, I wish I didn't have to think so hard all the time. You know, it's exhausting. But in general, um, you know, we're just we're living in this very exciting and crazy time, and um, doesn't feel like it's going to slow down anytime soon. Yep. Um, I wrote down a couple of questions. We covered most of everything I wrote down, but I thought, um, what's something you've got coming up next, or something you're excited about? Um, you know, we're, we're we're kind of immersed in the budget <clears throat> stuff right now, and so um, I'm working. We're we're I'm trying to pick my head up so I can think beyond the, when the budget is over. But we one of the hallmarks of the, of Create Wisconsin is really um, focusing on the regional aspect of our work. We're a statewide whole, right? We make the case that this is a statewide effort. And um, we, one of the ways that we're, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the word, managing it, is that we are working on a regional basis. So the, the statewide entities that we work with, like WE, the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, the Department of Tourism, uh, you know, other statewide groups, they're divided into regions. And so we're trying to um, concentrate learning resources and opportunities in the various regions of the state so that, you know, we love when people come to Madison or, you know, when we get together on a statewide basis. But in real life and in daily life, it is much more feasible to be for people to be in a regional setting and, and be in that um, as as Jay Salinas from Worm Farm said, in that culture shed. Have you heard that phrase? No, I haven't, but I like it. So, you know, from the Worm Farm, as I mentioned yep. before, um, Jay is one of the founders and he he coined, I think he coined the term culture shed as, you know, we talk about watershed and food shed and culture shed is sort of the local and the regional arts and cultural sector that you interact with and especially if you're an artist you interact with your peeps in those regions so we're working on a regional leaders network where we're really trying to um uh, uh build up the resources and the opportunities in the regions of the state um we've done some training we've gotten people together on zoom and so that's one of the things that we're working on in terms of um uh Kind of putting that structure into place. <laughs> so as soon as the so I'm trying to do that as the budget process is going on and and um, as the budget you know winds up or wraps up, um, hopefully we'll be able to celebrate some wins and then get to the the regional um, opportunities. The other thing we're working on, <coughs> excuse me, we have a partnership with the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, which works with cities and villages around the state. And that's how I've gotten to know a lot of mayors and city council people and all those kind of people. Um, uh, we're working on some assistance with those entities to help with cultural planning. So I get a, I get lots of people, lots of mayors saying to me, "Well, we want to do something with that creative economy. Can you help us? Can you help us with that?" I'm exaggerating, but you know, <laughs> they really want artists to move to their town because that's how you become a cool, creative place. They don't really have any money to spend on how to do that. And they don't really kind of, you know, change is hard. So that's like, what do we do? So um, we've been doing a lot of work with communities um, to help them figure out what that means. Like, what does it mean to be known as a creative place? Like, we want to be like Viroqua. We want to be like Green Bay. We want to be like whatever other community it is. Um, how do we do that? Well, you have to figure out what that means. Just like somebody individually has to figure out what it means. 
you have to figure out what that means as a community. So we've been doing a lot of cultural planning and, and that's kind of what we're trying to, we're starting to ramp up with the league is getting that cultural planning going. So that's pretty exciting actually, because that means that we'll be able to um, make help make change at the local level. It's not linear or smooth. In some ways it's painful because, you know, we're in, because change is hard, but it's, um, it's exciting because it means that we're really working with the people who are doing the work um, and getting those people connected with the arts world in their communities. And who knows what can happen? You know, anything can happen if that ha if if you make that kind of thing take place. So lots of stuff. Yeah, lots of good stuff. Yeah, that's um, great. Pause for a minute and just let make sure that anybody here on the call with us, if you have questions for Anne, we have about 15 minutes left. So please unmute yourselves and jump in or type anything you want in the chat and I will happily read it out loud. Um, but as Anne and I are wrapping up here, I'd love anybody to ask any questions they have. Oh, I do see somebody typing in the chat, so we'll, we'll see what that question is. Um, I wrote down a lot of just questions about, you know, what, what do you love about Wisconsin arts and um, were there any projects or initiatives you heard about at Create Wisconsin Day? That was always my favorite part about attending was hearing what everybody else was up to. <laughs> Actually, I'll mention what, mention something at Create Wisconsin Day. Two things we did that were really great. One is we had an artist in residence, okay. which we've done before, but you know, not for three years. So that was really exciting. Um, we had a young man, um, a young artist, young, 30, from, um, Appleton, who does a lot of work with murals and community and kids. And he he did this whole sort of participatory art. I said, you know, I said, come up with something where people can, you know, make art themselves. So he got a bunch of canvases and people were encouraged to make a participatory art project. It was great. I mean, it was amazing how people just enjoyed that so much you know it was like the once the first person did it then everybody kind of swooped in and started doing it and the other thing we did was what we called the wall of ideas which was basically we put up some paper on the on the windows in at the overture center and people wrote down their ideas their challenges their their thoughts and then some people said oh i can help you with that that challenge or here's my phone number and let's talk about whatever um so that was really exciting. Those two things were very participatory and um, gave people a chance to express themselves. For sure. I, I always love that with that kind of coming together and yeah. getting yeah. to hear what everybody else is up to and their great initiatives and kind of their successes and their failures, you know, things that didn't go so well so that everybody could learn from them. I love that. Well, and if people are honest, we all have those things, right? Yep. And Try so, um, yep. Yeah. So I find that in that kind of setting, people do feel comfortable being more honest about it, which For is sure. good. Yep. And I think it's really cool. I kind of circle back to the Wisconsin idea that there is a way for everybody around the state who works in the creative sector to kind of come together in some way, because that, right. that's not always well, that's not always easy either. And to, you know, figure out what somebody's doing in Baroka or Superior. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on. I think the last Arts Wisconsin Day I attended, I was talking to somebody up in Ashland and they were doing something with public art and outdoor art and banners or something. And it was really cool. And now we're still Facebook friends, you know? Those yeah, kind of right. That come out of networking with people in other communities is important and it's good for everybody to have contacts and that kind of networking can really lead to brain yeah and and as i said you know you know i you never know what's going to come out of that contact right so you meet each other you send an email oh let's you know why don't you come and help me do this or you know did have you ever thought about some other thing so um you can't always plan you can't plan for that but you can what we try to do is make the situ make circumstances where it can happen facilitate right a little bit yeah. <laughs> i also think that you know i as i attended i mostly because i was working here or i was a student at gb when i attended 
But I think it's really great for artists who are kind of out there on their own to attend because that's how opportunities happen. Right. You kind of have to put yourself in the place where things could happen, right? Um, it's, you know, you can stay in your studio. I'm exaggerating. Right. But, you know, or you and every once in a while, it's good to get out and kind of see what, um, you know, what other people are doing and see, gee, that looks kind of interesting. Maybe I'll try to do whatever. Oh, and then you learn about places like the Worm Farm and other nonprofits all across the state that are doing incredible things, usually with not a lot of money. And they're definitely not with a lot, not with a lot of money. Exactly. But they're still doing incredible things. And I think that's the part that was really cool is to attend those events and hear what everybody's up to and see that we're also not alone in our struggle, right? I think sometimes artists and creatives feel that way is that we're fighting the good fight up here and you know, what's everybody else doing? It's happening across the state and to have contacts and people who are doing the same thing in other areas right. is great. It's so helpful. Yeah, I, I I mean, I think that is so much a, a part of the work that it's easy to feel like you're isolated and alone and then you go out into the world and you and that everybody else knows what they're doing and I just have no clue. I mean, sometimes <laughs> I still feel that way. And um, then you go out in the world and you realize, oh gosh, here's someone else who doesn't know what they're doing either. And you know, right now, of course, we're kind of all making, we're all reinventing ourselves, kind of driving the car while we're building it because so many things, again, look the same, but they're actually different. And so it is very helpful to kind of meet up with fellow travelers who... Um, yeah. And not only are things different, people are different audiences are different, customers right. are different, and what people want and what they're enjoying is different and how they're spending their time is different. It's it's an interesting landscape to be navigating right now. And right. say that as somebody who's running operations in an art studio, right? You know, and, and figuring out who our audience is and what people want and when they want it and how they want to access the arts. It's It's an interesting puzzle right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a little it's crazy, but it's good. Absolutely. I wouldn't trade it for the world. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, we are getting real close to 630. So again, if anybody in the chat there wants to drop any questions, please do. I, I can't imagine you want to hear me sit here and ramble any longer. Um, <laughs> I'm happy to, though. That's, my, that's the best part about this is that Usually by about this time, I'm like, how did that hour go by so fast? I, feel like <laughs> I know, exactly. Having coffee and hanging out. Um, what else do I have written here? So I was looking at your website and looking at, you've got a lot on your website and you've got uh, kind of a little list of programs here. And so we figured out Create Wisconsin Day was last week. Um, the one that was kind of stuck out to me because I know Green Bay does a little bit with it is Make Music Day or Make Music Wisconsin. What yes. For that? Oh, I love that. So Make Music Day is a global day of music. Um, uh, started in Paris in the early 1980s. Um, and the whole idea is that um, people make music. Uh, blah, 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 you know, I'm just trying to think, how else would I say it? Um, uh, you don't have to be a professional artist. In fact, the whole idea is really that you're not a professional artist, but you are invited to step out of your house and make music in as many ways as you want to. So um, the, the national organization started in this country more than 10 years ago, and Madison was actually one of the first communities in the country to be part of the global, again, the global effort. Um, a professor at the university here started it and in Madison. And so now the Madison chapter is a, um, a, a nonprofit of its own and, and does hundreds of performances. In fact, I think the director told me the other day that last year, Madison accounted for something like 10% of all of the make music performances in the country because they did so much stuff. But about 
well, right before the pandemic, um, Create Wisconsin or Arts Wisconsin at the time, we connected with the national organization and the director came out and the director was was really wanting to work with states to get, you know, get a statewide perspective going so that individual communities could be part of these state systems and be more and there could be more chapters. So um, he got in touch with me. He came to Wisconsin. I took him on a whirlwind, whirlwind tour of the state. We went. We had 13 meetings in five days from Kenosha to um, Land O'Lakes, and um, and down to La Crosse and Mineral Point. Um, and then the so we had I think 16. We went from six locations in Wisconsin to 16. And even though it was 2020 and the pandemic happened and most things were virtual, we still had, I think, 16 perform 16 locations in the state, um, including Green Bay. And um, in the number went down in 2021, but now we're up to 20 locations in the state, um, which is more locations than any other state in the country. And again, it ranges from Madison and Milwaukee and Appleton and Green Bay to Land O'Lakes, which has less than a thousand people, and Barron in the northwest part of the state, which has, I think, less than 5,000 people, maybe even less than 2,500 people, um, and kind of everywhere in between. And the whole point, again, is that it's not professional musicians, although professional musicians do participate. It's that if you want to, if you play in a community band, the community band can play. If you want to put together a kazoo orchestra, the kazoo orchestra can play. Um, it is really a very fun way for people to be involved in music. And people have done everything from porch concerts. You know, that was the pandemic where you could stand on your porch and make music and your, your neighbors could come out of their houses and listen to, um, you know, major reggae bands and parks and everything in between. And so um, uh, it's really great. I mean, it's it's just a really wonderful way for communities to get people to be involved in making music together, which is of course the universal language. Uh, so, um, so Create Wisconsin has been kind of overseeing and trying to organize um, different communities. If some community expresses interest, then we try to advise them and connect them with the national organization. Wisconsin Public Radio has been really involved. They've been great about promoting the different make music communities. Um, and um, uh, it's just a really fun thing to see all over the, all over the state. So if you go to make, it's makemusicday.org slash WI, and that's where all the communities are listed. And it is June 21st. This oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. I've got, sorry, Carrie. Thank you. I you. <laughs> ah, thank God you're there. Um, it always ha it, the point is that it happens on the summer solstice, June 21st. And some communities are actually doing things on the winter solstice, December 21st. Um, um, but it, it is from sun up to sundown, regardless of the day of the week, that um, people are making music together. Samantha posted in the chat that our local organization here, Mosaic Arts, has more influence yes. for Green Bay. They so are Mosaic is most Mosaic has been that made me think of this to ask you about it. It was for Mosaic, so right. So Go. Mosaic has been the host organization um, since the Green Bay chapter started. Um, the Widener Center is involved this year, um, so it's yeah, it's a community. It's a community event. You know, cool. um, it's all about making community. Okay, we've got one last minute if anybody wants to unmute and ask Ann any questions. Otherwise, um, I'm going to say thank you so much. This was wonderful. Um, again, it's so nice to just be able to connect virtually. It makes it easy for all of us, but it also feels like we're right here hanging out. So. I know. So yeah. nice to see you all. Sure, thank Thanks you for the opportunity, time. Carrie. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. And, um, you know, acats at createwisconsin.org. Send me a message if you have any questions and um, we'll all keep in touch. Sounds good. Samantha, did you have one last thing? No, nope, just wanted to say thank you. And it was nice seeing your face. <laughs> nice <laughs> to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you virtually. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. All right. Thank you so much. Enjoy yeah. the spring.